Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So when you're just starting out with Studio One, you might have noticed that when you drag in an instance of Impact XT, our drum sampler, that you end up with one track in your song, but with eight channels in your mixer. How is that possible? You just uh, added one instance of an instrument and not eight, right? Or perhaps has it happened to you that you added another instrument track and you assigned it to an instrument thinking that you would have another copy of it and then you switched the preset and now the other sound was gone as well? Well, that's why it's so fundamentally important for you to learn the difference between tracks and channels right away. Because once you learn the difference, not only will you not confuse them going forward, but you can actually take advantage of the amazing flexibility that this concept gives you. Let's check it out together. Tracks are these vertical lanes that you see in your arrangement where you create your events and in case of instrument tracks, draw your MIDI notes in. Channels are what you see when you open up your mixer in the horizontal and what you hear as the result of the editing that you do in your tracks. The MIDI notes that you draw in on your instrument tracks don't actually make a sound, it's the channels that produce the sound. Let me tell you a little analogy so I can make this distinction a bit more easy to understand. I want you to think of the instrument track as the sheet music and the instrument channel that's assigned to this instrument track. That's essentially the pianist that's playing these notes for you. Without the pianist, these notes are completely empty and they don't have any audio. So let's reiterate for a second. These MIDI notes that I'm seeing on instrument tracks don't have actual audio. All that the instrument track does is tell the assigned instrument what to play and that sound gets output via the instrument channels. So with the things that we just learned in mind, let's look at the track inspector now. While we can only set an input for audio tracks to capture audio from, in instruments we can actually assign our virtual instrument that we find in here in the mixer. And then we assign a channel that's made available by this plugin so that the audio comes into the mixer. Now for audio tracks it doesn't make so much sense to talk of tracks in the arrangement and channels in the mixer simply because the events have audio within them. Just dragging them to another track won't make them play something completely different. But for instrument tracks it really all comes down to the assignment of the channel that you set in the track inspector. To make this really easy, when you drag something from the browser, we're handling that assignment for you, but please know that you can always change it going forward. While this seems like a disadvantage at first, think about the flexibility that this gives us, because I can just play the sound, and while it plays, just assign a different instrument. or uh, assign this instrument that you just heard to the second track and then duplicate this. Obviously impossible to do with audio. The second thing you might understand now is why it happened to you that you created another instrument track and you assigned a presence to it. to layer this kind of sound with a different preset, let's say maybe this organ sound here. And now when you played it back, you hoped that you would hear the piano with the organ, but you actually ended up only hearing the organ. Well, because you only added an instrument track that's still assigned to the same channel. Another thing you might understand by now is why you can add an audio effect such as the analog delay to a specific audio event by holding Alt you can't do the same thing for instrument tracks. See, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, these are event-based audio effects and this event clearly doesn't contain any audio. These are just notes. You could, of course, apply the analog delay to the track itself, but only because it's assigned to a channel. Right? So this effect is not on this track here. This effect is on the mixer channel. I can easily demonstrate that this is true because I can just unlink the track from the channel, delete the track and see the effect is still here. Now of course this isn't a limitation of instrument tracks whatsoever. In Studio One I can very simply just delete this audio event, drag the uh, instrument event on here, then 
it will be rendered because Studio One is smart enough to understand what I'm doing and then I can apply the effect that way. What's even cooler is that as you can see the MIDI notes are still within that audio event so you can just drag them out to another instrument track if you want and assign that to a different sound so you can layer it. One more great example that really highlights why we don't go for a strict one-to-one -one relationship of instrument tracks with channels in the mixer is multi-out instrument setups like this one. So I have this instance of Impact XT here and I'm outputting all of its different sounds via multiple channels into the audio mixer. And I do that so that I have more control over the individual sounds like the kick, snare, hi-hats, because I want to process all of these differently. However, if there was a one-to-one -one relationship between tracks and channels, I would have to have seven tracks just for that one drum instrument. So I'm sure that you'll agree that composing your drums in just one track keeps your entire song way more tidy. So to summarize, instrument tracks are basically just note information that don't output any audio if they're not assigned to a channel.